So this here is a MIG welding bay, right? MIG is this machine here, stands for metal inert gas. Okay, it's just a different type of welding. We have a few different sorts here. We've got a um, oxyacetylene and this one here is MIG. Um, it works very different to the oxyacetylene. There's not a flammable gas involved. Instead, it's electric. We have a, a negative here and a positive is the uh, handle that we hold. The way it works, when we pull the trigger, gas comes out and so does the wire. The wire arcs to the negative, which is our bench, and that causes a bright light, which is basically we're seeing electricity. Um, and that then melts the wire that comes out and then that forms our weld. So a couple of things we need to uh, do before we uh, get started welding. We need to have a nice clear workspace. We also need to ensure that we are following appropriate safety. So we need to get a welding helmet, gloves, and your welding apron. Okay, we have multiple uh, sets of them. So make sure that you're wearing the appropriate stuff. Um, turning it on, it's very easy. Okay, on at the wall, just there and then on at the gas. So hopefully this shows up, but there's a little ball bearing here. As we lift this handle, that ball bearing needs to come up. If it doesn't come up, please see your teacher straight away, let them know and they'll uh, fix the gas for you. So our welder is now on. This is set to the correct um, settings at five and 20. So five amps and 20 volts. That's our basic um, settings that we work to most of the time. We'll go further in depth with that individually as we go along, but for the sake of this video, five and 20 is the settings that we require. Um, with your handle, okay, the way we weld is we need to be 90 degrees up, okay, so that's 90 degrees for this part of the, of the welder, 90 degrees up, 45 degrees over. Now, if you're left-handed, you may, right, you may uh, weld opposite, okay? I'm right-handed, I go 45 degrees up, no, sorry, 90 degrees up, 45 degrees to the right, okay? That's how you hold it. You also wanna be a centimeter away. So if you're too far away, the gas that's coming out, which isn't flammable, but the gas that's coming out isn't able to protect the weld. So that gas protects it as it cools down. If it's not there, what can happen is the weld will have holes in it. I like to call it a SpongeBob weld because it looks a bit like a sponge. Okay, it's got lots of holes in it and it's not very strong. So that gas needs to be there while it cools down. Also, if you're not roughly a centimeter away, okay, the weld is too cool by the time it um, attaches, to the, um, attaches to your work. Right, so it sits on top and it balls up, okay, which means that it hasn't penetrated into the parent metal and the weld isn't very strong. So we want a nice flat, wide weld. We don't want a tall, skinny weld, okay? And the shape that we're going to do with our welder is cursive L's, okay? I've heard it described as cursive E's as well. I like cursive L's because E's tend to get a little bit too narrow. We want it nice and, nice and wide. So quite simply, up, back a little bit, up, back over it, up, back over it in a consistent way, okay? We're not going fast, it's a nice consistent speed, okay, and a consistent width. Just like any weld, we do need to do a tack, okay? So that's a very small weld at each end of your material. Without that, because there is a lot of heat involved, okay, metal when it heats up tries to expand. So if we just start welding at one end, by the time we get to the other end, that has opened up, okay, and we're no longer uh, how we want it to be, we're not parallel. So a very small tack on each end, all right, and then we go into our weld, nice and consistent. If you get to your welder and it looks like this, okay, we have pliers here. You can cut that to the needed length, all right? Always make sure you do cut it. Don't try and weld with it out here because it will spatter and it will cause all sorts of issues. The main thing you need to do, you need to remember to tack weld, okay? A tiny little weld at each end of your work so that it doesn't expand as you go out. 
Um, you need to remain 90 degrees up and 45 degrees to the right for myself and a nice consistent L cursive as you're going continuously until you finish your weld. Make it an even spacing as you go. Once you've finished your weld, okay, you need to pick it up in some tongs. You can borrow them from the Oxy welding bays. Um, be careful with it, it is very hot. Okay? Grab it in the tongs, make your way carefully over to the um, trough in the bag area. Run it under cold water until the steam goes away. Right? And then keep running it underwater for a little bit longer. The teacher will not put it in their hand until you're willing to put it in your hand without your glove. Okay, that's just a safety thing. The image that you're after for your weld, if you can think of a stack of $1 coins, put it on the side and let go, and you get that ripple look, that's what you're after with your weld. That is the perfect weld. A nice ripple, even, consistent um, weld.